Welcome. In this video, I want to talk about 12 books that has had the greatest impact of my life spiritually. These are not the only books I've read. I've read books for different purposes, for academic purposes and so on. But I'm talking about those books that had had impact on my devotional life, helping me, especially in my early days as a Christian, to develop a balanced and mature Christian life. Welcome to this video. I'm Pastor Damien Chambers and uh, this is your devotional digest. So just before I share, I want to make a quick disclaimer. I am in no way affiliated with any of these authors. I am not getting paid for promoting their books. These books have impacted my life spiritually and I just feel I want to help you to grow spiritually by helping you, by introducing you to these books. All right? I had a difficult time keeping this list to 12, but um, here are the 12 books that has had a great impact on my life spiritually. I hope you are blessed. First up on the list of these 12 books is this little book, Steps to Christ. It is a classic by Ellen G. White on salvation. It begins with explaining our condition as a sinner, how conversion works, when you are converted, how to stay converted, Bible study, prayer, assurance of salvation, how to deal with doubt. I was introduced to this book by being asked by one of my professors to read the last chapter and I was fascinated. I was blown away. I've read this book so many times. If you are a Christian who is struggling with your spiritual life, this is a book for you. Steps to Christ. I can tell you this. The most important person to your salvation is Jesus. And this book is about Jesus. It is a full exposition on the life, teachings, and character of Jesus. I read this book the second time when I was going through a low moment in my spiritual life and was trying to find some sense of direction. Because sometimes you can be there being a Christian and being misguided. And so there are so many um, wrong directions to go into as a Christian. And I was asking myself, who should be my role model? Who should I pattern? And the answer came to me, Jesus. And so I decided to take this book along with the Bible. And for about two years, I read chapter by chapter along with the gospel. And it has been a revolutionary experience since then. I recommend to you The Desire of Ages. Next up on the list is this book, The Great Controversy. Again, it is written by Ellen G. White. And this book is special because it gives you a basic history, an introduction to the history of the Christian church, starting from the destruction of Jerusalem until we get into the new Jerusalem. This book had a transformation experience in my life because as I, as I read about the stories of the Walden Seas, Huss and Jerome, John Wycliffe, Martin Luther, um, John Calvin, Zwingli, and the Advent movement, and even talking about the future in terms of what will happen, a commentary on the final chapter of the book of Revelation, this is a powerhouse when it comes on to an introduction to the Christian history of the Christian church and what happens is very inspiring. The next book on the list, I do not have a copy right now because sometimes I lend these books out and I just don't get them back. But Alone with God by Matilda Andros is a small, compact book, but very powerful, that gives experiences and stories that illustrate what it means to live the life that counts. And the life that counts is one that is dedicated to Bible study, prayer, service to God, and fellowship with others. Alone with God is indeed a very powerful book that inspires you to remain dedicated to your spiritual life. One of my favorite on the list and, and most interesting is this book, Blinded by the Light by Philip Dunham, a retired Seventh Adventist pastor. This book is a full exposition on the topic of apostasy, understanding the nature of deception, how people who are being strong in the church can be deceived, starting from the experience of Lucifer 
coming right down into the Bible and even within the Seventh-day Adventist Church. It explains, as I said, the steps that lead to the first steps towards apostasy. And it, you know, reading this book helps me to recognize that you cannot be too spiritually strong to be deceived. And so the greatest and most important thing is to have a constant examination of your own self and recognizing that you cannot live a moment without Christ. It's also very helpful to me as a pastor in terms of identifying persons who might be on their way to apostasy and be able to help them and also to identify groups that have apostatized in terms of the other whole, I think, two chapters on identifying, identifying false teachers. Very powerful book that really, for me personally, it has helped me to keep my feet on the ground and connected with Christ. Another very interesting book that has helped me, you know, I believe that as a Christian, reading the Bible alone is fine, and the Bible is the most powerful book, but of course, God gives wisdom to all of us, and we can learn so much from each other. And this book, The Lost Art of Thinking, by Dr. Neil Nedley, is a classic book on the subject of emotional intelligence and how it affects the Christian. In the first part of the book, Dr. Nedley covers the 10 negative patterns of thinking that can negatively affect your emotional intelligence and your, also your spiritual life. And I'm telling you, when you understand these negative patterns and overcome them, it can revolutionize, revolutionize your life in terms of your relationship with others, handling your emotions, and your own spiritual life. It also has information on how your health affects your emotional intelligence and how to make good decisions. This is a powerful book, The Lost Art of Thinking. Next up on the list is the best book that I've read on the subject of spiritual maturity, and that is The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. Spiritual maturity is not a subject that is taught and preached about a lot in my church, but until you understand and apply the principles and grow to become a mature Christian, you will continue to go in circles in your spiritual life. Pastor Rick Warren presents his subject thoroughly. And one of the things that I appreciate about this book is what is referred to as the acronym called SHAPE, where he helps you to identify your purpose in life as a Christian. I don't endorse every teaching that Rick Warren teach, but for this book, I recommend it as a, as I said, as a very good exposition on what is spiritual maturity. The other book on my list is this book called out of the Pit by Larry Lightwalter. It is a thorough commentary on the life of Joseph. You know, the story of Joseph is one of the most inspiring in scripture. It is hard for me to even read this story in the Bible and not shed a tear or two. And so if, you're, if as a Christian you're going through setbacks in your life and you want to understand God's purpose for setbacks, this is a book that you need to read. Out of the out of the pit. Joseph's, Joseph's story and yours. The subject of righteousness by faith is to me one of the most important for the Christian to understand. And it can be very confusing as to what is required in terms of the life that you live as a Christian and how you accept and live the righteousness of Christ. In his book, 95 Theses on the Righteousness by Faith, Maurice Venden gives a full and clear exposition on the principles and, and subjects and subtopics of the righteousness of Christ. It covers topics such as um, sin, um, forgiveness, how repentance, perfection, conversion, um, you know, how the, 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 the believer's relationship to the law, abiding in Christ. Those subjects that can be very confusing. What I like about this book is that it's done in a kind of a devotional um, setting where each of the 95 theses um, are done in a one and a half page kind of thing. So you can read it on a daily basis and it covers the su subjects um, thoroughly. So a good book for a growing Christian 
on the righteousness by faith or the righteousness of Christ. The fourth book on this list written by Ellen G. White is one, Messages to Young People. This is a book not only for young Christians, but for young people who are Christians. It covers relevant topics such as your battle with sin, growth in grace, um, overcoming temptation, dating, courtship, dress, amusement, recreation, um, social relations and stuff. I found this book to be very, very inspiring, as I said, as a young person, a growing Christian in my late teens and, and, and early 20s. Solid advice. Matter of fact, when I'm counseling couples, young couples especially, in preparation for marriage, I ask them to go and read the chapter on courtship and marriage because it has solid counsels in there that can help you to make better decisions in, in regards to your um, relationship, courtship and marriage. The other book on the list, I do not have a physical copy right now, but it's called Coming of the Comforter. This for me again, you know, as I said, all these books have had impact on my life, but I, this book is so impactful, I can remember the day I read it. I can vividly in my mind remember where I was when I was reading this book. It is a full exposition on the Holy Spirit, a full systematic study on the Holy Spirit. It's called Coming of the Comforter by Leroy Froome. A powerful exposition on the work and ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. If until you start learning how to pray for and seek for the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life, your, your Christian life is going to be like out of one, 0 to 10 on a level of 4. But when you get this full understanding of the work of the Holy Spirit and start to seek for God's presence in your life through the Holy Spirit, I tell you, your experience will be 10 out of 10 in terms of the fullness of the blessing of what God has in store for you. So, coming up with the Comforter, I'll try to put a link in the description below so that you can access it. Uh, it's a very, very, very important book, again, for a growing Christian. Finally on my list is a book about money. Money is a very important subject for the believer. And, you know, this book is one that helps me to realize that the Bible speaks so much about money. It's called, It's Your Money, Isn't It? by Edward Reed. This is a practical money management guide for the Christian. It has helped me, as I said, to understand the role of money, to help you to create a budget. This is a book I read that helped me to, to know how the steps to take to, to create a, a budget that I've been doing for since I've been married for 13, 14 years now. It helps you to understand how to get out of debt, um, how to make good decisions about purchasing a home, how to plan for the future and make investment, and so on and so forth. It is an excellent book on money management, and it has been a very impactful one. It has really been the foundation in, in terms of guiding me about money management principle. So that's it, 12 books. That, has impacted my, that have impacted my life spiritually. I hope you enjoyed these, this video presentation. I hope you have seen or heard about a book that you're going to go and get and read. If there are any books that you felt should have been on this list, please, I would like to hear from you. Post in the chat below. Or if you were inspired by any suggestions about these books, tell me about your experience. I would like to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel as we use this channel to help you to grow spiritually. God bless you.